Okay, uh, here we are in our next video. Today we're going to look at the five themes of geography, and it's important to understand all five of these themes, and we'll spend the rest of these lectures going through them. Uh, to understand geography, historians study the five themes of geography. And the first is location. That's using latitude and longitude to find locations on maps. Second is place. Third is interaction between people and their environment. Fourth is movement. And the fifth is region. Those five themes of geography encompass all of the areas of study in geography. <clears throat> Now take a look at the map on the right, and that is a New England village in the 15, 16, 1700s. It's typical, has all the buildings that uh, most villages had in New England. And if you, t if you see it, do you know exactly where it is? You really don't. But now we're using location, and we're going to talk about uh, where this village may be. So loca location tells where a place is. And there are two kinds of location. First of all, there's relative location. That tells where a place is in relation to another place. So, for example, I have three there. Um, Gloversville is one hour northwest of Albany, New York. Also, Gloversville is 10 miles north of the Mohawk River. Um, let's see. New York City is three hours south of Amsterdam. Um, all of those different ways that we describe places in reference or relation to another place is called relative location. Um, another example using this image is the school is to the right of the covered bridge. If you see that, here's the covered bridge, here's the school. The inn is next to the minister's house. Right there's the inn, here's the minister's house. So that's relative location. We use it all the time. I might ask you, where's your locker? And you say, well, it's next to Joe's. Or um, where do you live? Say, down the road from the school. That's all relative location. The next kind of location is exact or absolute location. It tells where a place is by using latitude and longitude lines on maps. Now, this part of the lecture, I think you're going to want to pause it here and there so that you can understand everything that I'm telling you. So latitude, uh, the definition of latitude lines are lines on a map that measure distances north and south of the equator. Lines on a map that measure distance north and south of the equator. Then longitude is lines on a map that measure distances east and west from the prime meridian. Lines on a map that measure distance east and west from the prime meridian. Those two sets of lines are down here in these pictures. On the left are lines of latitude. They are the horizontal lines, the lines that extend east and west. But if you go from one line to another, you're going north or you're going south. So lines of latitude measure distances north and south of the equator. Over on this picture, you see lines of longitude, and they are up and down, vertical. They extend north and south, but they measure distances east and west. So if you start at the prime meridian here at zero, and you go to 20 degrees east longitude, you're going in the direction of east. Same thing if you go, say, to 120 degrees west longitude, you went west. If you want to replay this part, go ahead, replay it so you understand these uh, concepts because they are very important. When you combine the two sets of lines, you get a grid on the Earth's surface, on the map. This is an imaginary grid. It doesn't really exist out there. You won't go tripping over lines of latitude and longitude, but it's just a way that um, geographers and basically anybody uses to uh, locate a place on the map. It helps you to find exact location. So take a look at this map. Where would San Francisco be located using lines of latitude and longitude? Well, it looks like San Francisco would be located just about maybe at 39 degrees north latitude and 
118, 119 degrees west longitude. When you're doing latitude and longitude, it's okay to estimate because uh, you can zoom way in really close to find an exact location. But if we have the entire Earth's surface here, you just have to estimate, and that'll get you close enough. All right, uh, now we have to find America's location on the Earth to continue understanding geography. So the United States, or America, the United States of America, is part of North America. That is one of the seven continents on the Earth. Those seven continents you should know from your uh, sixth grade, fifth grade, all the way down to kindergarten probably. Um, you should not have memorized those continents by now. They are Asia, Australia, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, Africa, and again, Asia. So uh, seven continents. You can see them on the map. Uh, they have different colors. They all have a number. And the United States is a country that is part of North America. Make sure you know the difference between countries and continents. Countries like England, France, Germany, those are in Europe. Um, China, Mongolia, Japan, those are in Asia. South America has countries like uh, Ecuador and Peru and Brazil. United States has Canada, or well, North America, I mean, has Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and some other countries down in the down in the narrower part there between North and South America. Okay, um, Amer the Earth can also be divided into hemispheres, and a hemisphere is if you just cut the Earth in half, either on the equator or over on the uh, prime meridian. So America's location, we are in the northern hemisphere, if you cut it on the equator, as you can see in this left image. And then North America is also in the western hemisphere over here. Make sure you know the uh, four different equators, the northern and southern, or actually the hemispheres, sorry, the northern and southern hemispheres, and the western and eastern hemisphere. Okay, so now we should be moving on to our quiz. Go on to Moodle and take quick check quiz number two.